So hi and welcome to another review and today we're taking a look at these monolith mouse pads to see how good they are and whether they're going to be worth picking up. Now I might be sat in a little bit of a weird position today, that's because I've got my cat behind me, I don't want to kick her off the chair, so uh, we're just going to have to deal with that in this video. So if you're not familiar with my videos, we're going to do the usual tests here, we're going to be using a force gauge meter here to test the glide of the mouse across the pad. If you want to understand how to read these measurements, there's a video in the description that explains all my measurements for all my videos because they're all generic. We're going to use this caliper here to record the thickness. We've got a tape measure as well for the length because these are bigger, these mice pads. And then we've got the, try not to knock these over because they're pretty well balanced. And then we've got the Zowie FK2 here on stock skates, which is the baseline mouse that we've used to give us the readings that we're going to be showing you in the charts for comparisons. We're also going to be doing a sticky test to see how this mouse pad grips to my desk here and see what force it requires. If you want to check out all this information, it's on my biddybob.com website, or it will be because I'm still working on it, it's taking me a lot of time to update at the minute, but it's going to be good hopefully once it's there, and you can look at things like dynamic charts and use all the data that I'm collecting to be able to pick out which mouse pad you want or which mice you like. You also can vote on there, and you can also do a request for a video if it's not on there as well, and try and prioritise some of my videos for me, so I'll make sure I'm giving you the content you want to see. So I've been speaking to the people that have developed these pads on Reddit who are monolith. They decided to send me out some versions of these, and I said sure, because I like the kind of design of them. They're different. They're not the normal black ones that you normally get. These are in different styles here, as you can see. And I thought, well, it's worth a look at it. And as you know, because of the data we use anyway, it's not going to affect my review on these mice pads. And if it did, you'd be able to see it in the test results anyway. So there's two versions of this out on Amazon at the minute. There's the M330, which stands for 330 millimeters. And there's the M508, which is this pad and should stand for 508 millimeters. The M330 is $19.99 and the M508 is $29.99 on Amazon. So price-wise, they're certainly up there. These are not the cheapest pads out at the moment, but hopefully going through these tests, we can see if it's going to be worth picking up that for that price. As we've already alluded to, looking at the design here, you can get these in different patterns. This is the gray one here on the front here. There's the black one. There's the one with the zombie on that I like. There's all these different styles, and that's really what I like about this mouse pad. I like how you can have a different custom one that will fit to your desk setup, which I do like. There's not many mouse pad providers seem to be creating these custom pads with the ability to have different types of colors, really. So this is a textured mesh here. The textured mesh is quite tight. It's not the tightest I've seen, but it's certainly looking fairly good here. It'd be good to see how smooth it is when we're running it through the glide test. It does have a stitched edge, which if you've been following me, you'll realize I'm not really a fan of. But this one's decent because it does have quite a low profile stitched edge, which will protect it from wear. And I found that it's not been digging into my wrist while I've been gaming with it. Also because of the size of these pads, which we'll get into the dimensions in a minute, the stitch edge on this one doesn't affect me like it does on something like the large M510 because the mat's big enough that I don't actually get near the edges. Because of the weight of this pad, because it's quite a heavy pad, this is quite heavy rubber. After a period of time, once out of the box, this mat did lie flat and I had no issues with rolled edges or anything like that. So what I'm going to be doing as well is giving away three of these mice pads here. The information will be in the description. But what you need to do is put in the comments what game you're going to be playing with this mouse pad and what mouse you've got at the moment and skate combination. And then I'll send it out internationally across wherever you live. Pull the drawer out in about two weeks. Let me know which one you want. Do you want the gray one? Do you want the zombie one? Do you want the black one? Or do you want this kind of like lettery one here? Can't really call what it's called. And I'll send it out to you in the post. And then what I'll do is at the end, I'll pick three of you for the winner and I'll send out each one of those to you. If you all pick the same pad, then you might not get the version you're exactly asking for here. I'll just pick at random which one I'm going to send you. So the foam on this pad, I would say, is a firm foam. It's not very soft here. It's a nice, decent firm foam. So your mouse isn't going to sink into it under a lot of pressure. There is a logo and it's in the top left hand corner. It's stitched onto the pad. Again, I'm not a fan of that, but it is in a bit of a location that I don't use. I don't generally use the top left corner. I use the right and the bottom right corner where most people put their logo. So it's good to see it there. And if it was causing you a problem, you could always rotate the pad anyway. The base here is really good. It's got loads of little circles on here that are quite large that are really good rubber. And we're going to see how they stick, but generally the movement of this is pretty secure. So the two different sizes, well, this is the 508 here, and this measured in at 508 millimeters, and the width of it is 410 millimeters, and the thickness is just under 5 mil, which is good, which is why it's not been rubbing on my wrist. So the M330 here, I can't measure, but the specifications say it's 330 millimeters wide by 330 millimeters long by 5 millimeters thick. Getting into the decent stuff here, the glide test, while well, this had an average glide on an NSW of 27, NFW of 37, RSW of 24 and RFW of 35, which gave the pad an average glide of 31 grams in force. If you compare this to the other pads we've tested using the stock FK2 here as well, 
You can see it's sitting more down the control range, it's slightly faster than the Fury S, which is very slow, and it's sitting closer towards the QCK, which is good to see here on the GSR, with the M510 still holding that record where there's the fastest cloth here. What I did notice when I was playing using games is that I had no issue with it. I was playing Insurgency here, using it, and I was loving how it was controlling. I've been using my G640 as my daily anyway, as you know, and this pad was performing very well here in this game. In fact, I quite liked it, to be fair. So how did this pad do in the movement test? Well, it didn't move here. It took 640 grams of pressure that you can see here before it moved, and that's really good, most are around 450 to 500. So then the test here, the conclusion, well, I really like the color variance in this mouse pad. I like how you can have different ranges here. It'd be nice to be able to pick a color of a mouse pad and then that manufacturer to provide it. I understand that's gonna cost them a lot of money, but here, Monolith here have done a good job of giving you a good range of mouse pads and styles to allow you to be able to pick the right one for your setup. I like how this mouse pad worked. Like I said, when I was doing the gameplay here in Insurgency, I had no issues with it, I quite like using it. It does move very well with my G Pro wireless on hyperglides, and overall the mouse pad was performing well here. I'm not a fan of the stitched edges, we've said, but this one didn't rub into my wrist, which some of them do, about six mil, I think, seems to be the problem for me. So this just under five mil here was doing a good job here, didn't cause me any problems. It's also quite low profile to the surface as well. Doesn't really protrude up. The only one hint I could say here to them is not to roll the pad, but 99% of the market do that anyway. And that it did take a little while for this pad to settle. So if all you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We've got the G502 weight reduction coming next. I've just been working on that. So hold your horse as it's coming. I'm going to do some more mice pad tests on the Glide 38, the, the ROG Scarab and the SPC. We're also going to do the Glorious Helix. I haven't done that yet. And we've got a lot of other pads to test. So keep watching. See you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.